This is a RCA 128 uh, tombstone from 1934. I was kind of distracted by the terrible state of the cabinet, so I forgot to take video before I got this out of the cabinet, but this is probably going to require a lot of work. Uh, the tuning capacitor is rather stiff. I did put some oil on this, but it didn't help a whole lot. And this thing is completely not working. So I guess we should start with this, because if I can't get the the tuning uh, tuning adjustment here working, it's kind of pointless to go through and restore the rest of it if you can't tune it. So I'll we'll start there and see what we can do. All right, so let's see if I can show this side view here. I don't know if you can see back in here. See how that ball? It looks like this shaft goes through and turns a disc, and that disc rides against this ball, and the other side of the ball rides against the big uh, tuning half disc. So by tuning this, that disc should turn and push the ball, which then turns this. Let's see if we can take that apart and oil and clean it or whatever it needs. Alright, so looks like we can unclip this somehow. Maybe. It's going to be hard to do with the camera in the way. Alright, so now that's off. It doesn't really help. It's so dirty, you can't really see what's there. back and forth, but I can. Alright, let me play with this for a minute. Alright, so I got most of it apart. What I found out was if you shove a screwdriver in here, this is loose now because I have it apart, you can pry it open. I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but there's a hole down in there where the ball bearings go. So what I did is I pried this open far enough so that the ball bearings could... Well, anyway, I pried this open far enough so the ball bearings could come out this way. And then once I had um, two of the ball bearings out, this shaft pulled out, and then I pushed this back to get the third ball bearing out. So you can see we have three balls here. So I'm going to clean those up and clean this up. And then as far as tuning, this is still pretty stiff. So I'm going to see if I can oil this somewhat. I don't think this is going to come apart the rest of the way pretty easily. So I don't think I'm going to worry too much about it. It does a tone, it's just rough, so I just put some oil down in there and that's the end. Put some oil down in there and see what we can do. So let's see.
So let's zoom in some oil. Let's see if I can get it better from the other side. Oh, I can't really get it easily from either side. Scratch you there at the end. All right, so let's see if I can get this on camera. I'm going to put this back together. So, first, I'm going to put the ball bearing, one ball bearing in there, and then I'm going to move this back up in place, and then I'm going to try and put this in there, okay. Now let's see if I can rotate this to find the next hole right about there. Alright, so now I'm going to try and pry this open far enough to get the next, oops, on. Alright, that's in. And we've got one more. And there you go. I'll just try and squash that back together a little bit. It is kind of expanded. Well, the only way I can think of that they did that at the factory is they put the put each half on and then riveted it together because there's rivets in there. Let's squirt some oil on there. I'm trying to think that I probably should have done that before I put it back together, but oh well. So, now I need to get this clipped back on. That was easy. Alright, and this is actually a pretty interesting mechanism. As you, as you turn it, it turns the tuning, but if you pull it out, well, you pull it out, you're supposed to get a veneer drive, but. That works. If you pull it out, nothing. It does feel a little loose. Is this on incorrectly? Alright, let me look at that. Okay, so it turns out that bending is critical. So you see here, I have it, it goes one speed. If I pull it out, I get nothing, but if I squish the part that got expanded, now I have a much slower veneer tuning. Okay, you see that's one speed. That's 
the other speed. The second speed is much faster than the first speed. So all I've got to do is figure out, just get something to clip these two, hold these two together. Just hold these two together. And we should be okay. All right, so let me look for something like that. All right, looks like a simple binder clip will do the trick. I just removed the the metal tab so that they don't hit it on anything in there. So you push it in, and you get one speed. Pull it out, and you get the much slower new tuning. Push it all the way. That's hitting a little bit there before I just adjust it. Seems like that should work though. So, tuning capacitor, seems like it should be okay. Assuming that it's not shorting or anything, but we don't know that right now. So, next let's turn to recapping the chassis so we can at least so we can try and get this thing working. So, this uses RCA's uh, paper tar capacitors. Um, it seems like uh, RCA, they switched from putting all the capacitors inside one big wax block to using these, like, it wasn't any replacements, that doesn't seem very stable. Um, but like, little ones like this are up here. Oh, it doesn't seem like it's in there too good either. You can see some back down in there. Um, after they stopped putting all the, the paper capacitors inside one big wax block, they changed to these uh, tar filled cylindrical individual capacitors. And I think they used those up until the mid 30s I think and then they switched over to the the wax ones like this um, the annoying part about these is they don't always have the value of the voltage marked on the capacitor so they just have a part number there um, hopefully we can get the correct information off the schematic uh, and they also have these big uh, wax capacitors here this 4 microfarad at 450 and 4 microfarad at 150 and it looks like one of those was replaced. This is not original. And it's a four at 450, so probably one of the ones in this box was replaced. And these are wax capacitors, by the way. And they replaced with a lunch of light. That's okay, because I think these are just uh, filter capacitors. So, let's get the schematic, and I guess we can start recapping then. I'm not gonna plug this in because the cord is in such bad shape here. I'm just going to get into a, a recap on here probably. Although, maybe I will plug this in just for entertainment. We'll see. Okay, so I replaced most of the capacitors in here. Uh, these couple ones left up here are just low voltage caps across the um, antenna and oscillator coils. 
so they shouldn't really be a problem. And that one down there was a 0 0.05, but I went out of those, so I'll have to change that at a later date. And I was wrong about about this guy. I said that was a paper cap, but it's actually not. It is an electrolytic to full microfarad. And I didn't know that they had a dry electrolytics that early. I thought all the electrolytics they had in the 30s were the big um, wet kind, the big cans full of electrolyte. But it also had this capacitor, which is another electrolytic full microfarad at 25 volts. So, yeah, I didn't know they had these kind of electrolytics back then in the 30s. I was kind of surprised by that. Uh, the rest of the capacitors, these were all the replacements for the original uh, two large filter can electrolytics, the wet kind. Someone had replaced them at some point with these. And the other kind are all OCA tar capacitors. They're just basically just like the regular paper capacitors, except that they're sealed with tar. And they don't have the values on it. They just have some kind of... I can't really read that one. They just have some kind of... Um, RCA part number, I guess you can see that. But no indication of the value or the voltage rating. So I looked at the schematic and the parts diagram for the... Um, value and then I just went with um, 650 volts for the voltage because nothing in here should be that high. Also kind of interesting ones like this they didn't even bother to put a cardboard shield around it's just the, the regular uh, layers of paper just wrapped up with the leaves sticking out the end. It's kind of interesting. So, um, oh I also want to mention something on the front too. So at least RCA was nice enough to give us a nice long speaker wire here so we don't have to disconnect the speaker while working on this. Down here in the front this is a capacitor but it's shielded. They actually shoved the capacitor inside this metal shield and this is the audio coupling capacitor to the volume control. Uh, I don't know why they felt the need to put this shield on but since the original had it, I just ripped the old capacitor out from inside here and shoved the new uh, 0.05 capacitor in here and then took the leads out. So, should work now. I have to replace the other dial light. I replaced this one, but I didn't have an extra one, so I have to dig one up. Industrials are up 140.
45 points to 24,530, but the NASDAQ is down 5 points. The S&P 500 is up just 7. More than a fifth of the nation's employers... That must be out of Philly as KYW. Uh, uh, Clear Channel. The strongest hiring uh, outlook in 10 years. The employers station. in all industry sectors anticipate hiring. I have to be careful with music on my video about the Zenith C730. The copyright police got me and stuck ads in the video. So the ads on that video, they don't, they are not for me. They just make money for the copyright police. Are other dealers roasting your ch overpass credit mishaps? Let us help you. Information about contests heard on WAEB by logging on 790. Santa Rosa. Viernes <laughs> dos de You have to wait till night to get that. That's on there, though. certainly seems awake, at least on band C. And they're sure it can be kind of difficult to tune, that's why they have this where you can pull out to get the fine tuning. Of course me touching it is throwing it off. But anyway, um, seems to be working electrically, so now we move on to the fun part, which is the cabinet. So that's it back in the cabinet. You see it's kind of a big cabinet. It has these extra things that stick out the side. Um, you can also see that the cabinet is not so nice either. A lot of the finish is missing off the front. And also this is starting to separate up here. The a gap between the roof and the the front. I have to push this back in and glue it down. Um, so once I get and I also have to replace this as well. The coat cloth has a few holes in it. So probably I'll glue this, glue and clamp this first, and then I'm not sure when I'm going to do the finish. Um, December in Pennsylvania is not conducive to finishing outside and I really don't want to finish inside so we'll see but um, that's it for now so see where this project goes hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching okay so it's been a few months since I made the last portion of this video I attached the power cord properly inside replaced this grid cap wire that was the insulation was falling off of I replaced the last few capacitors on the inside. I'm not sure if you can see it here, but I replaced the 
the rubber grommets that the chassis rests on. I got reproduction little rubber washers to go in there. So I can't really see what did it. Mobile on those. I'm not sure how much of a problem it is with these, um, these ST type tubes, but with the older S type, the globe tubes are prone to microphonics, so that's why a lot of this, the old radio chassis are mounted on rubber. But I'm not sure if it's a problem with these tubes because they have the micro stabilizer in the top. Uh, the tuning capacitor is on rubber washers as well on the chassis, so. Um, even if vibration got into the chassis, it still shouldn't affect the tuning capacitor. And those rubbers didn't seem as bad as the ones that were under here, so I left those alone. Uh, also, there were a few warm days where I was able to get outside and work on the cabinet, so that's finished as well. And I'll show you that in a moment. So I was able to get outside and work on the cabinet. I stripped off the finish on the sides. Uh, the front of the sides here, the sides, the top of these shoulders, and the top, also on this strip along the bottom, and we painted those. I left the finish on the front face here because that still had most of its original finish, and I just went over that with the finish restore and got that looking pretty decent. Um, I say it looks better than it did when we got it, so it's an improvement there. Also replace the grill cloth. This might look a bit out of shape, and actually it is. I guess after 80 years of the speaker hanging on the back, this front pushed out a little bit, so this is no longer flat, and I have no way to fix that. Probably have to steam it or something. I don't have the facilities to do that, so I think it looks fine. I'm satisfied with how it turned out. Unfortunately, this radio requires a, a long wire antenna, which is picking up all kinds of interference. The Will Kane Show, coming up. look at this these memos last night you know it would be defense exhibit a if Trump Check out a short wave. Well, I'm not going to get anything on here because it's still daytime. So no, remember this has the veneer to me. So if I push it in, if I push it in, it goes faster. If I pull it out, it goes slower. Relax. Relax. 
continuité de la révolution, de la liberté, de l'indépendance et de la solidarité reste là. Le cœur de l'Institut Poulain de l'Éthéry. Oh, I'm picking up a few stations on band C. It's what about nine, nine megahertz. Alex Jones show just what I need Unfortunately on this one my music station down here is buried in the interference. A lot of my early 30s radios, they pick that up but they always have this interference kind of riding over it. I'm not quite sure what the interference is, but the later radios with the, um, the coil wire antenna, the directional antenna, the loop antenna, they're able to filter this interference out and pick up that station pretty clear. But these ones with the long wire pretty much always have that interference riding on here. But I think that's going to be it. Hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.